Hello boys and girls, welcome back to KSP to Mars episode 20. It's been a while, I've been very busy and happily occupied with my girlfriend, family and a few friends that visited over the past, well, I don't know how long it's been, months, years, weeks, at least a few days, and so I haven't been making any videos. So that's going to be remedied today. As you can very well see, we are currently watching a video selecting a Kerman to be our hero for the day. And it's going to be Shelgan Kerman. We put him in the New Grounds 5 vessel and that is going to shoot off to the moon to do science. Now, this footage was recorded quite a while ago, so I don't recall the exact specifications of the rocket, but as you can see here, it's lifting off very, very slowly. As has been pointed out many times in the comments by my viewers, subscribers and loyal fans, thank you for existing, uh, this is a terrible way to lift off. Um, the problem here is twofold. Um, Going up so slowly wastes a lot of delta V in gravity drag. Uh, basically, you're just standing on your rocket, not going anywhere, but still expanding fuel. Not very efficient. Um, that's the, the that's the problem. But there are two parts that cause this. Number one, I have no powerful engines to get. Uh, get off the pad faster requires more thrust and that requires either bigger engines or more of them well we have fairly weak engines so it's going to be more of them and there is a finite amount of space on the bottom of a rocket so that leaves us with the inefficient uh, staging uh, got awed by the explosions there skipping ahead to the separation of the asparagus stage in the upper atmosphere now anyway that's not very efficient. I would like to put larger engines under it, but I can't. A bigger part of the problem, though, is that Ferrum Aerospace, the mod that supposedly adds realistic uh, aerodynamic behavior, well, it actually does nothing supposedly about that, the mod that adds that wasn't working properly. So this is the last episode uh, that was recorded with that unfunctioning mod in it, and that makes the air at low altitudes a very great deal soupier than uh, it should be and uh, when I say superior it's it's not thicker but it acts on every part of the rocket regardless of whether it's actually exposed and more terribly it depends on mass as well so if the part is heavier it will produce more aerodynamic drag which is not correct so that's uh, that and the weak engines cause the horrible slow liftoffs Fortunately, that should soon be finished because uh, today's mission is to get science and with that science we will then be able to purchase bigger engines that will hopefully alleviate some of this problem. So while I was talking about this, we have launched the rocket into space and set up a trajectory to intercept the moon. So let's just do that and see how we get on when we get there. I'm going to cut the video forward to that point, so I will see you there. And there we are, coming up on the moon. The original mission plan was to do a flyby, get the EVA report, get the crew report, radio that back home and then safely return to Earth. But Shalgan Kerman figured out, or it was me, that by doing a radial burn we could get the periapsis much closer to the lunar surface and hopefully get a uh, EVA and crew report from uh, high space above the moon and low space to the moon and even possibly get some EVA reports over the different biomes. So here I am trying to fine-tune the periapsis so that it is as low as it will go. Let's fast forward to that point. And here we join Shelgan Kerman at 79 kilometers over the moon doing EVA reports and racking up the science. Thing is, with the EVA reports it matters uh, above which biome you are and it does not with the crew report. So the one crew report we, we did and now it's just a question of popping outside the capsule, looking around, scribbling down that report and climbing back in and radioing it home. We brought enough batteries to send about 10 to 12 reports if I recall correctly. So, and I think that's about the same amount of biomes that the moon has. We're currently at 47 kilometers, a fairly low periapsis. Unfortunately, it is on the night side, so we're not going to behold the splendid moonar lunar surface. And here we are higher up again. The problem we have been encountering now is that because we are on a fairly fast trajectory, we only spend time down low near the surface a short amount of the time. 
uh, we zip by it and then immediately ascend to a higher altitude where the specific, the, the biome specific EVA reports are not possible. So Shalgan, not wanting to disappoint his superiors back home, has decided to fire his engine once again, lower that trajectory and even get an orbit going. We're in a polar orientation so even if we have a fairly elliptical orbit with a, a periapsis that's close to the surface and an apoapsis that's far out we should due to the rotation rotation of the moon still be able to spot some different biomes in uh, subsequent passes and indeed that is what ends up happening so after having garnered all the science Shalgun is going to attempt to get home again. Unfortunately, no matter uh, how much he tries and calculates and tweaks his trajectory, it turns out that he has been a little bit too... too liberal with the rocket engine and its fuel tanks and he does not have the capacity to breakaway escape from the moon once more. So he is doomed to staying there. Dedicated scientist that he is, he is then using the rest of his fuel to lower the orbit even further as, the long, as low as it will go, as is the motto, the mission slogan for today, to get in some more science, which he does, which he's happy about, but he's not going home again unfortunately, unless of course we can mount some kind of rescue mission but that is for other futuristic episodes not for today so in closing today we sent Shalgan to the moon he mapped he visually mapped most of its surface we got like eight seven or eight biome reports in I think if I recall correctly so that does give us a lot of science. Unfortunately, it is the so many. I haven't even. I've lost count um, how many Kerbals we've stranded, killed, incinerated, or otherwise harmed. Anyway, it's the science that counts. Unfortunately, these little green men do appear to be somewhat expendable. So, with that done, we are going to return to the space center and have a look at the R&D. And before old me actually does that let me yibber yabber on to you a little bit about the future the actual future that is not the Kerbal Space Program future the future in which I am making videos for your enjoyment and my own as well because I do like talking to myself in front of a computer don't you believe it that is just going to go on no worries about that but I do have a Windows install to perform this afternoon because one of my hard disks is giving up the ghost and it happens to be the one that the Windows is installed in so it's not the right one to crash and burn no worries it's the smallest one I have it's 10 years old and I have two more so that should be fine but you know as these things go it can unpredictable stuff can happen causing me to have to go to the store buy new stuff and not be online for a few days so if that happens and I vanish then you know what's up but we're gonna count on everything working out so here I am closing the mission report I researched the bigger rocket engine so we should be getting some nice big rockets in and of course the correct aerodynamics so that opens up a whole new ballpark of Delta V capable rockets and hopefully a lot more exciting missions thanks for watching thanks for waiting while I was away I hope you enjoyed this. This was Lorenzo. See you next time.